The small Central American country of Honduras isn't generally one that gets associated widely with military aviation history. But that isn't particularly fair, in my opinion. Because in fact, the Honduran Air Force, the Fuerza Aeriana Hondiana, sorry for terrible pronunciation, or the FAH for short, has several interesting episodes in its history that are worth documenting. If you've seen my previous videos on the Hundred Hours War, also known as the Football War, you'll know that the FAH has the distinction of achieving the last combat kills in dogfights between piston engine fighter aircraft. If you haven't seen those videos, I'll put links in at the end. But in regards to some of its other, more obscure history, this is poorly documented and there is quite often little information available in Spanish and almost none in English. And it is one of these little known incidents that I want to highlight today. The time Super Mystere fighter jets of the FAH shot down and damaged two helicopters of neighbouring Nicaragua. But first, a brief history. The Hundred Hour War of 1969 demonstrated that not only was the FAH the most efficient part of the Honduran military, it was also the most formidable. Of course, the other protagonist of the conflict, El Salvador, didn't particularly like the result, and once the war finished, began looking to improve their air force themselves. This led to an arms race between the two countries as both sought to replace their ancient World War II era piston fighters with more modern aircraft. Initially, the FAH bought a small number of F-86K Sabres, between 4 and 6 depending on the source, from Venezuela in 1970. But it appears that these proved to be almost unserviceable, and only a couple were ever made airworthy. However, they made for useful propaganda as a significant improvement over the old Corsairs. This may have backfired because in 1973, El Salvador purchased 18 ex-Israeli Dazal Uregan jets. Needless to say, the FAH was now on the back foot. More Sabres would be acquired, this time ex-Yugoslav and RAF Canada Sabre Mark IVs, but what the Hondurans wanted was something to give them a clear advantage. And again, Israel provided the answer. In 1976, the FAH began taking delivery of ex-Israeli Air Force Super Mystere B-2 fighter jets, with a total of 16 ultimately being purchased. These were the first supersonic fighters operated by any Central American Air Force. Additionally, although old airframes, they received a comprehensive overhaul to make sure they were thoroughly fit for service. As part of the deal, the Israelis switched out the old French Attar engine and replaced it with a more modern American Pratt & Whitney J-52 P-8, the same as used on the A-4 Skyhawk, and incidentally, really annoying the United States. The new engine was not only lighter than the original, it also had nearly half the fuel consumption rate, though it did require an extension to the fuselage for fitting. Additionally, the Israelis fitted new electronics and launch rails for the Shafria heat-seeking missiles on the wings, as well as expert pilots who helped train the FAH on their new aircraft. The Super Mustairs would provide the principal air defence asset for the FAH for more than a decade and considering what happened in Central America over that period, they certainly earned their keep. In 1979, the Marxist Sandinistas took power in neighbouring Nicaragua in a revolution. With communist insurgencies rising across Latin America, the United States began programmes to combat what it saw as a direct threat in its traditional sphere of influence. This saw the US provide arms, equipment and training to militaries across the continent. But in terms of dealing directly with the issue of communist control in Nicaragua, a covert action policy was implemented. The CIA formed the Contras, Nicaraguan counter-revolutionaries who were based in neighbouring countries and would launch attacks into Nicaragua to destabilise the new communist government. With the newest member of the communist fraternity under threat, the Soviet Union and Cuba both responded by matching the United States' efforts, furnishing the Sandinista military with weapons. At the same time, the Sandinistas began assisting the communist revolutionary forces throughout the region, providing these with support and safe havens. And so, Central America became the new combat zone of the Cold War, with Honduras very much on the front line and the FAH a major player. The pattern of operations was largely the same. Contras would launch attacks into Nicaragua and in turn be hunted by the Sandinistas, who sometimes, in efforts to deal with the problems at source, would launch attacks into their neighbours to attack Contra bases. 
This meant that the Sandinista forces would often end up in direct military conflict with the armed forces of those countries. As a result, much of the history of this long-running war in the region is often like a game of he said, she said, with both sides accusing the other of violating their integrity. And this leads us to the particular episode that I want to highlight, and to impart some new information into the discussion. Now, I must add a disclaimer at this point. Much of the information I shall relay in this has been provided to me by a single source, who claims to know some of the pilots involved. However, some of it differs from the available printed information on this incident, which is admittedly extremely sparse anyway. I have been unable to verify the information he has provided independently. I am not in Honduras, nor do I speak Spanish. However, my source has provided me with enough information and documentation that I believe that he has both been able to speak directly to pilots involved and has relayed to me the correct information. I shall point out the details where our version of this event differs from the existing narrative. So feel free to treat the following with discretion. But I believe the account I am about to give is the accurate one and that any future investigation would bear that out. On the 13th of September 1985, pilots Lieutenants Lopez Fialos and Francisco Sosa of the FAH strapped into their Super Mysteres for a mission. Their job? To provide top cover to two A-37s that were tasked to destroy a new barracks that had been built just across the border in Nicaragua. There had been rumours circulating that the Sandinistas may have acquired MiG-21s from Cuba, and the Mysteres job was to make sure that should this prove true, the A-37s were protected from any enemy fighters. Both flights of aircraft met up at the rendezvous point and then proceeded into Nicaragua to make their attack. Here we have a discrepancy. In a classic example of the aforementioned pointing the finger, both sides at the time accused the other of making the incursion. This was extremely common and occurred regularly throughout the decade. But, according to the pilot that my source interviewed, the FAH was launching an attack into Nicaragua against military targets. The A-37s hugged the ground all the way into the target area, while the Super Mysteres flew higher to watch for any MiG threat. They wouldn't see any MiGs, in fact Nicaragua never had any, but they did spot a formation of nine Mi-8 HIP transport helicopters flying just above the jungle canopy. As soon as the helicopters heard the jet engines roaring above, they scattered and began to fly evasive manoeuvres. Lopez, displaying that true terrier temperament of a fighter pilot, called that he was going to attack, but Soso ordered him to hold off. Their job was mid-cap. But then the pair spotted an Mi-24 gunship coming up behind the scattering flock of hips. The Mi-24 Hind was an extremely formidable attack helicopter, one that represented a significant threat to Honduran forces in the area and was heavily used in the anti-contra operations by the Sandinistas. As such, it was a priority target and too good an opportunity to miss. Lopez called out that he was going to attack and dove upon the Hind while Soso stayed up high and provided cover. Slowing to try and match the Mi-24, Lopez took his Mystere right down to its stall speed, causing Soso to call out to him that he needed to maintain his speed. But Lopez was apparently intent on his target and activated the Seekers on his chaffreers. Get in tone, he squeezed the trigger and the missile leapt away, straight into the side of the hind. Seeing his wingman so low and slow, Soso also dived down onto the flock of helicopters. Maintaining his speed so that he could reclimb, he streaked towards one of the lead Mi-8s and opened fire with his 30mm cannon, scoring hits on the helicopter. Then, both fighters climbed back up to their covering altitude to continue on with their mission. Here we have another discrepancy. Most coverage of the event states that an Mi-8 was shot down by the missile, whilst the Mi-24 was attacked by cannon fire. But according to Colonel Soso, this is incorrect, and the event occurred as described here. With the helicopters now behind them, the four aircraft proceeded with their mission. As they approached their target, four anti-aircraft guns opened fire on the intruders. Representing a major threat to the A-37s, these held back and loitered while the Mysteres went in to deal with them. According to Soso, both attacked from about 5,000 feet and at an almost 90 degree angle to minimise their profile to the incoming fire. As Tracer zipped past his canopy, Soso lined up his gun sight. He says that, I really wasn't scared or nervous, 
it just pissed me off that these assholes were actually trying to shoot me down. Opening fire with his 30mm cannon, he saw the dust spurt around the gun engaging him. He used this to walk his fire onto the target. As that gun went silent, the others all stopped firing, the crews fleeing the approaching jets. To make sure they didn't get any ideas, Soso and Lopez proceeded to shoot up the abandoned guns for good measure. With that done, the A-37s made their attack run, hitting the targets with such precision that, in the words of Soso, it seemed like they were laser guided. The four aircraft then returned to Palmarola Air Base. The Super Mysteres would serve in the FAH until 1996, when they were subsequently retired, with F-5E Tigers from the United States becoming the service's primary fighter. But a number still remain on display, including this one flown by a now retired Colonel Sozo, which has been restored with his original call sign, and which you can see him alongside in this shot taken this year. I hope you found all this interesting, as these skirmishes tend to go overlooked, but I think they are well worth recording. Thanks for watching, and thank you to Alex for providing basically all of the information used in this video, and many of the photographs. Have a good one, and I'll see you all again soon.